Pin bar candlestick pattern and trend line trading are among the most popular and well-known price action patterns. And while the pin bar setup may be as popular as ever, many traders still have trouble trading the pattern profitably. In today's video, I want to clear up some of this incorrect information regarding pin bars and trend lines by giving you a simple forex strategy that will change how you trade pin bars. A pin bar or hammer candlestick is a price action pattern which is supposed to signal a reversal that may be about to take place in the market. Here's an example of a bearish pin bar. Notice how the body of the candle is found at the bottom of the candlestick and the long wick is found at the top. All bearish pin bars you'll see form in the market will follow this basic structure. They all have their body at the bottom of the candlestick and their wick at the top. Sometimes the body of the candle will not be found right at the bottom, like you see in this example, but it will always be found in the bottom half of the candlestick. Here we have a bullish pin bar. The body of the bullish pin bar is found at the top of the candle and most of the wick is found at the bottom. Even if the body of the bullish pin bar doesn't manage to close right at the top of the candle, this doesn't make any difference. It's still a bullish pin bar and should be treated the same as all other bullish pin bars you'll see form in the market. One main way to trade pin bars is at levels of support and resistance found in the market, namely trend lines. Trend lines are one of the cornerstones of technical analysis and are used mainly to identify and analyze a trend. Trend lines on down movements are always drawn above the candlesticks and they require two swing highs in order to be placed. Trend lines on up movements are drawn below the candlesticks and they require two swing lows in order to be placed. For a trend line to be considered invalid or broken, the market must have managed to close above or below it with multiple candlesticks. Now, why pin bars at trend lines are high probability setups? Well, for two reasons. First, there's a rare setup. It's not every day you'll see a pin bar at a trend line. And second, a pin bar at a trend line shows an important event is taking place, which is going to make a lot of traders lose money. Looking at this example, we can see a trend line drawn from the swing lows of an up move in the market. The market hit this trend line several times. And here the market returns, and it produces a bullish pin bar. Now let's consider the psychology of traders who sold during the creation of the bullish pin bar. They all sold because they believed the market was about to break lower. They have used the same trend line, but their method of using it was to identify a change of trend. So when they saw the market dropped below the trend line, they classified this pattern as a possible trend change, which caused them to play sell trades. The bullish pin bar would have looked like a bearish candle when the price was below the trend line, and when the market begins to move up above the trend line, which creates the weak on the pin, the traders who sold are now being put under pressure to close their trades, which will result in increased pressure to the upside. So why this strategy works? Because we are trading pin bars in the direction of the main trend. The appearance of a pin bar is supposed to signal a reversal in the market, but as you have probably noticed on many occasions, the price will not reverse and will continue moving in the dominant direction of the trend. People who trade pin bars rarely trade them in the direction of the most recent high or low because they have been taught that pin bars are supposed to cause a reversal for example, when price action traders see the price moving higher, they will place sell trades whenever they see a bearish pin bar, but neglect to place a buy trade when they see a bullish pin bar. That's why it's not a wise idea to trade every pin bar you'll spot on your charts, and especially the ones that go against the trend. If you didn't already know, there are different types of pin bars which appear in the market. When I say types, I don't mean one pin bar has a bigger wick than the other. I mean, the causes behind why a pin bar forms in the market can be different depending on where the pin bar is found. Pin bars are typically reversal candlesticks. Now very important, the only time a pin bar will cause a reversal is when the big market players, namely banks, take a significant amount of profits off their existing trades or when they are placing trades in order to make the market reverse. And in the second scenario, these pins are formed with the trend and act as continuation patterns. So the first step to trading pin bars is to determine which direction the market is currently trading, and for this you use trend lines. 
you need to look to see if the most recent swing low that's formed in the market is lower than the previous swing low, or if the most recent swing high is higher than the previous swing high. If the low is lower, it means that the trend is currently down, and if the high is higher, it means the trend is up. In this example, we have an uptrend line. Seeing a bullish pin bar form when the market reaches the trend line would be a strong signal, which means another swing higher is possibly about to begin and getting a buy trade placed when the pin bar has formed gives you the opportunity to possibly get into a high probability trade. Also make sure you have a stop loss placed with every trade. When trading bullish pin bars, you always need to put your stop loss a few pips below the low of the pin. As for taking profit, I aim for at least 2 to 1 risk reward ratio. For example, if you risk 30 pips, aim for 60 pips of profit. For bearish pin bars, it will be the other way around. If the market was trending lower, you would start watching for bearish pin bars to form after a retracement has taken place and the market is back at the trend line. If a bearish pin bar forms at the source of the retracement, it's a sign that bank traders have got more sell trades placed and that a new swing down is now likely to develop. With bearish pin bars, your stop loss always needs to be placed just above the high of the pin. And here's an important tip. Make sure the body of the pin bar closes into the body of the previous candlestick. Here's an example of a bearish pin bar, which had its body close into the body of the bullish candlestick that formed before. You can clearly see the entire body of the bearish pin bar is contained completely within the body of this bullish candlestick. Here's an example of a bearish pin bar which didn't have its body close into the body of the previous candlestick. You can see the body of this pin bar closes into the wick of the previous candle, not a body like we saw in the previous example. The pin bars which have their body close into the body of the previous candlesticks have a slightly better chance of working out successfully than the pin bars which have their body close into the wick of the previous candlestick. The reason why is because when the pin bar body has closed into the body of the previous candle, it's a sign the momentum in the market has shifted and the price is about to move in the direction the pin bar is suggesting. Another tip for trading this strategy is to only trade the pin bars which form during the time a currency is actively traded. So don't take trades on any of the pins which form during inactive market hours. For example, the pound dollar is traded the most between the time the London trading session begins and when the US session ends. After that, the volume drops off significantly because most of the banks which actively trade have closed by that time. So there's no big orders coming into the market causing the price to move up or down. The bullish and bearish pin bars you often see formed during low activity periods don't have a high probability of working out successfully due to the fact they have not been created by the bank traders taking some form of action in the market, like placing trades or taking profits. Typically, the pin bars which form during non-active market hours will be a lot smaller than the pin bars you commonly see form during active market hours. Here's another example of a bullish pin bar found at the trend line during London session. After seeing at least two swing lows form, we know this is a confirmed trend line. At this point, we would be waiting for a pin bar to form. When it does, we follow the same process of placing the trade as we would do for trading pin bars at support and resistance. The entry is at the time period you trade. For example, if you trade the one hour chart, you wait until the end of the hour before placing the trade. The stop loss goes below the low of the bullish pin bar setup. You could also lower your risk on the trade when the market makes a higher swing high. In this case, you move your stop loss below the most recent swing. As always, if you learned something new and found value, leave us a like to show your support, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to stay notified when we upload new videos. Until next time.